Hey guys, how's it going? Mr. Mitchell here. In this video, we're going to look at our fourth and final type of particle accelerator, which is the synchrotron. So let's get started. It says here that a synchrotron is like a linear accelerator that is bent into a ring so that the charged particles gain energy and therefore speed each time they go round. So think back to what you learned in the theory video for linear accelerators and imagine taking that and bending it into a ring. It then says that electromagnets keep the particles travelling in a circular path. So remember magnetic fields can be used to change the direction of charged particles and that's done using electromagnets in the synchrotron. As the speed of the particles increases, the magnetic field strength is increased. And why is that? Well, it says that when the particles reach relativistic speeds, relativistic effects must be taken into account. This causes the mass of the particles to increase, so a larger force is eventually needed to accelerate them and keep them in a circular path. So if you look here, we've got our synchrotron, which is connected to smaller and smaller rings. Our particle sources are on the left-hand side, so these are producing the particles, which can then move in to this little ring here called a booster ring. The particles are then moving into this larger ring once they've gained enough speed. And then once they've gained even more speed, they can move into this slightly larger ring until they've reached the desired speed for the synchrotron, where they can then enter the synchrotron via this path here. And you can see we've got this circular path for the synchrotron, so remember it's like the linear accelerator has been bent into a ring. We've then got regions where there will be particle collisions, and we've got powerful electromagnets which can be used to bend and focus the beam. It says here that again, electric fields are used to accelerate the charged particles, whilst magnetic fields are used to change their path and contain them within the beam pipes, so they don't travel in a straight line and hit the edge of the beam pipe. Lastly, one important part of synchrotrons is where it actually gets its name, and it's to do with the word synchronized or synchronization, which is to do with two things happening at the same time. And you can see that synchro part of the name there. So we say that if two beams of particles are colliding, they must both be accelerated in opposite directions at the same rate. To do this, the beam pulses must be synchronized. So if we have two particle beams in the ring here that are traveling in opposite directions, and then we eventually want to collide them at the same speed, then we need to make sure that the beam pulses are synchronized and that they have been accelerated to the exact same speed. And that is where the synchrotron gets its name. That's all for this video, folks. I hope you found it useful. If you did, give it a like, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care. Whoa.